My name is Demali Sally and I welcome you to this episode of the Ideation Corner. The Ideation Corner is a space where ideas are discussed and dissected. And today I host Dr. Gladys Zikusoka. She is the founder and CEO of Conservation Through Public Health. And she's going to tell us all about it. Gladys, you're very welcome. Thank you so much for inviting me to Ideation Corner. And it's a very impressive uh, idea, mm. and I'm really happy to be on the show. Okay. Thank you for making it. So tell me about uh, C CTPH. Um, we started CTPH uh, almost 20 years ago, wow. based on experiences I had. I know, I can't believe it's been <laughs> 20 years already, yeah. but it's based on experiences I had setting up the first veterinary department in the Uganda Wildlife Authority. Mm -hmm. They felt that they needed to hire a vet mm -hmm. because mountain gorilla tourism had just begun. Mm. And because we share over 98% genetic material and can easily make each other sick, mm. they were concerned that tourists who come to visit them can make them sick. We can make them sick? Yes, we can. transfer we can. diseases? Very easily. Okay. And mm -hmm. there were only about 650 mountain gorillas left in the world at the time, and it was a really big concern. Mm -hmm. But knowing that the gorillas can bring a lot of benefits for the country, lift people out of poverty, it was definitely worth doing, um, also to protect them and to protect their protected area. Mm -hmm. It was worth having tourists, so they hired a vet so we could monitor them. Okay, and you were the vet? I was the vet, yes. Okay. And, but one of the first cases I had to deal with within nine months of my appointment was a strange skin disease in the mountain gorillas, mm -hmm. which turned out to be scabies. So people had transferred? Sarcoptic mange. And it came from the local community, not from tourists. Ah, okay. Yes. And these particular gorillas got it because they like going outside the park to eat people's banana plants and mm. people put out scarecrows mm -hmm. to chase away wildlife yes. and they wouldn't use their cleanest clothing. Mm. So they touched it and it spread through the group because gorillas are curious. They're okay. like humans, mm. especially human babies. So they saw the scarecrow and they were like, what is this? What yeah, is it? they touched it and then they got the scabies. Mm -hmm. The baby gorilla died, unfortunately, but the others recovered when we treated them mm. with ivermectin. So you treat them with, with human medicine? Yeah, human medicine. It's also an animal inversion as well. Okay. So they got better and then later on we realized that so many other issues were happening when they go to people's gardens, there's mm. open defecation, mm. people don't cover their rubbish heaps mm. and there's a lot of poverty. So when we held health education workshops with the communities, mm. Um, they told us that they really wanted health services to, to be brought closer. They wanted to be more hygienic and mm. we should strengthen the human gorilla conflict team. Okay. We call them gorilla guardians mm. who had gorillas back when they come out. Okay. And so, so, so your that, mission kind of changed because initially when they're thinking the, the issues will be between gorillas and tourists and you're trying to mitigate that. Yes. Now you realize actually the community has to be part. The community has to be part. Mm. And so we decided to set up an NGO. Mm -hmm that improves the health of the communities together with the health of the gorillas and other wildlife mm -hmm. to prevent disease transmission in both directions, okay. including discouraging people from eating wildlife because it can make them sick, you know, both directions. Mm. And so, and also I found that when you care about people's health, you show them that you're not only concerned about the animals and the forest, yes. but you also care about them yes. because healthcare is a basic human right. Yes. So it was another way to buy pe people's, um, ownership into conservation mm. and that imagine you take care of the gorilla more than the people yes the gorillas have a vet they have a basically a doctor and then the people don't yes okay. yeah so it made people feel that ah uh, a lot of conservation has come across as mm. the wildlife is more important than the people who share their habitat with the wildlife yeah. and so we with the conservation through public health we're changing we're changing that narrative mm. telling There's people communities part and parcel of this yes of conservation they're just as important as the wildlife, but they're the ones who, who should be the leaders to protect the wildlife. Mm. And they're the ones who should benefit most from it, okay. not other people. Mm. And, so, and, and no wonder the communities were not interested in protecting the wildlife. Other people are benefiting more yeah. than them. And they were suffering, you know, crop losses, mm. some get injured. And so conservation through public health has helped to change that because mm -hmm. we reach everyone around the areas where gorillas come out. Um, we strengthen village health teams, mm -hmm. community health workers, teach them to do conservation work. 
okay. and they promote good hygiene and sanitation, good nutrition, mm. sustainable agriculture, family planning, okay. so people can have manageable families, mm. and they don't always have to go to the forest to poach. Okay. Um, we also improve their livelihoods mm. through Gorilla Conservation Coffee. Okay. Yeah. yeah <laughs> this. this is what you're most okay in my mind. This is most <laughs> yes, we started to support. Uh, the farmers living mm. around the park. It was actually my husband's idea. He's mm. a founder member of the NGO. Okay. We realized that the farmers were not getting... We found that when you're trekking gorillas, mm. which I, I would always visit the gorillas, and I meet people picking coffee, mm. and sometimes they stop and tell tourists this is part of the trail. You know, mm. this is Arabica coffee, Robusta. Mm -hmm. And tourists are excited because the only time they see coffee is in a supermarket. In a, yeah, so it's the first time they see a, a coffee, coffee tree, actually. Uh-huh, it's uh -huh. the first time to see a coffee tree. Yeah. And But then I found out that these farmers were not develop, were not having a steady market or a fair price. And my husband was like, why don't we develop a global coffee brand to mm. save the mountain mm. gorillas? And it's worked. Um, Gorilla Conservation Coffee started about 15 years, about 12 years after we had started conservation okay. through public health. It started yeah. a bit later. later yeah. um, but it's been really nice. It's really helped to strengthen our programs mm. because now the farmers who we meet, they don't have to enter the forest to poach. Okay. and collect firewood, which is what they were doing before. Mm. Because if they wanted meat, they couldn't have enough money from coffee to buy meat. It was easier for them to just go in the forest, uh -huh. hunt a bush pig okay. or a diker, mm. and they, they would be better off yeah. like so that. So they were, they were, actually, they were involving themselves in poaching out of need. They needed to eat. Needed to put food on the table. Okay, so yes. you give them now an alternative. You can actually get money out of coffee. coffee. Yes. Then you don't need to coach or yeah. okay. Yes. And this coffee happens to be very good coffee. Mm -hmm. um, we're very lucky because it's at a very high altitude mm. of up to 2,600 meters. Mm. And it was reviewed wow. by Coffee Review in California. It mm -hmm. was in the top 30 coffees in the world in, in the 2018. World. Yep, that they wow. reviewed. We were very, very, very happy about that. <laughs> yeah. And we got 92 points mm -hmm. out of 100. Mm -hmm. And oh, that's high. So we realized that the farmers produce good coffee and now we're getting all the farmers to have that same kind of coffee, like that particular farmer who, who produced that coffee mm. and he's one of the lead farmers that you we could have. You could trust who, the farmer who's grown which coffee? Yes. One thing about this global coffee brand is mm. it's traceable. Mm. We know the farmer who produces the coffee. Okay. And more and more people around the world want to know who produced this, yes. did they get paid company. well, did they have a fair price. Mm. That's all called sustainable coffee. Okay. And so what we do is we're guaranteeing to people that you get premium and specialty coffee mm. which is traceable mm -hmm. and that farmer is getting a better price for the coffee because mm. we give an above market price for okay. good coffee yeah only good coffee only good mm -hmm. and we train them to produce good coffee okay. we have agronomists on the team mm. because if you buy their bad coffee it's not a business yeah no it's yeah. not because you can't sell it anywhere no. and you're teaching them that it's okay. If you meet it the standard, then you will. Exactly. Out of it. So it's encouraging them now to do things properly, pick mm. the coffee at the right time, yeah. uh, process it properly so that they can get the high price okay. and lift themselves out of poverty. So that's something we're excited about. And a donation from every bag sold goes to support the work of conservation through public health. Oh, the mm -hmm. organization. Okay. To support community health, gorilla health, mm. conservation education in the same communities. Okay. Yeah. So, and, and I see this is following the, the global trend around ethical consumption, where you, you consume mm. ethically produced uh, products where these, it wasn't exploitative at the end. Yes. So now at least the farmer wasn't exploited, they were given a fair price. And then now this coffee is here. Yes, okay. it really fits into that kind of consumer. Mm. We call them lifestyle of health and sustainability consumers okay. <laughs> who like only buy products that are helping. Yes. And they'll pay, they're willing to pay extra as it. long as it's helping mm. communities, mm. it's helping the wildlife, the environment is protected or mm. people are not exploited, as you said. Mm. So yes, that's where we are with Gorilla Conservation Coffee. Amazing. But, but another very important part of our program, actually mm. the main one, mm. one of the big ones is the... We regularly monitor the health of the gorillas. Mm -hmm. So every month we collect fecal samples from all the gorilla groups that mm -hmm. you can see, yeah. the habituated groups. Mm. And during the census, which happens once every five years, we collect samples from those that are not habituated. Okay. And we always check for diseases that they could be carrying. Mm -hmm. and what do you mean habituated? What does that mean? Um, you can get close within 10 meters without them running away. Oh, the ones who were, uh -huh. okay, because I did, I did gorilla trekking and yes. we, we walked, oh my goodness, we walked and walked. And How walked. many hours? Uh, we walked for a bit, an hour and a half and we were going uh -huh. down. Then we found them. Yes. And they were sitting and they were just watching us. 
So I thought it was interesting that they could sit because I thought we were going to be chasing them around. Which gorilla group was that? I don't get the name. <laughs> which, which part did you trek from? I don't remember. Okay. They are birds. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so glad you did it. Yes. Did you take many photos? Tons. I have a whole video okay. on my YouTube channel. Oh, fantastic. Actually, I'll check really it out. There. Please. It would uh-huh. be great because it was fantastic. But then what I also understood that gorillas, we have them in Uganda, Rwanda, and uh, DRC. So how do you monitor those? Don't they move across borders without their knowledge? They do. Um, the ones in, in Uganda, Rwanda, DRC, the Virunga, gorillas are found in two populations. Mm-hmm. There's the Virunga National Park, mm-hmm. in, uh, which has Uganda, Mugahinga National Park, which has a few gorillas. Mm-hmm. Then most of them are found in Rwanda and DRC. Mm-hmm. That's all Virunga volcanoes. Okay. Then Buindi, which mm-hmm. is the other population, which is mainly in Uganda. Mm-hmm. There aren't any in DRC, although it borders with Sarambwe Forest Reserve in DRC. Okay. And so the, the ones in Virunga move around a lot between mm-hmm. the three of them. Mm-hmm. The ones in Windy don't okay. because there's hardly anything on the Congo side. Okay, so they yeah. stay this side. So the same families will stay in. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then when you collect, so they have thick water. We collect it from their night nests. Like gorillas build a bed every night. We call it yes, a nest. Yes, Did you see right. it when yes, you checked? Yes, they showed it to us. Uh-huh. <laughs> they construct this every night. Uh-huh. <laughs> and in the morning when they're getting up, yes. they defecate in it. Uh, uh, and every morning they'll be pooping. Yeah, and just like humans. Go... <laughs> <laughs> so in the morning, poop, then go. <laughs> exactly. They poop. And then we're, from there we're able to collect samples and yeah. find out if they're picking up any diseases, mm. if they're healthy, mm. can even do genetic studies. Okay. And all of them build a nest as long as they're old enough. As, as soon as they're like four or five years old, they'll mm. build a nest. Okay. Because that's time for mommy now to have another to baby. Okay. Yeah, and they have babies once every four to five years. So. Oh, they take that long. Anyway, yeah. the baby is very dependent. On the mother. Because we saw, when I was there, we saw a mother with a baby. Mm-hmm. But the baby is on their back yes. the whole time. Yeah. Okay. So that's why they need to give it five years. They're very good mothers. I've learned how to be a, a good mother from the gorillas. Seriously? They've taught me some, <laughs> given me some tips. What tips? On top of having an amazing mother, but yes. also the gorillas have taught me <laughs> how what, to be a good what mother. What have you learned from the gorilla mothers? <laughs> Of which? <laughs> yep. <laughs> my mom, yes. um, she, she's a very, very protective mother. I'm the last born in the family. You're the la- I'm the last born. Uh-huh. <laughs> 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 and, and she's always allowed me to follow my dreams. Because from my young age, I wanted to be working with animals. I, we had many pets at home. Mm. And there were my friends, my sister, who I follow, was five and a half years older than me. So okay. I was out of her age bracket for playing. Mm. And we had many dogs and so cats. So you were playing with the dogs and cats and everything. Mm-hmm. Okay. And so when I told my mom I want to be a vet. She wasn't surprised. She wasn't surprised. Okay. Yeah. Because <laughs> if they got sick, I wouldn't go to school. Really? You stay to... with your sick dog? I would say we have to go to the vet before we can go anywhere. So, <laughs> and, she, and I loved school because, mm. you know, I loved going to school. But on those days, mm. no school. So then she's, so when I said I want to do vet in university, she supported me. Mm. She said, I can't see you doing anything else. Even she knew that. Even she knew that. (laughs) Even she knew that. And when it came to going to the gorillas, Mm. she didn't want me to go. Because it's so far out there. And she was scared that they would maul me or something. Because, you know, gorillas have a bad rep Mm. from King Kong and those kind of movies in Hollywood. Actually, all those movies, the the gorillas are aggressive Mm -hmm. and hating people. Okay. Exactly. So she was so scared. No, 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 no way. <laughs> You're I, going to do that. And then I had to, you know, my guardian in Scotland, who where I did my vet school in UK, mm-hmm. she convinced her she was white South African, mm-hmm. uh, Mary Klopper. And she's like, no, it will be fine. It will be fine. Because Mary also knew that I really loved animals. Mm-hmm. And eventually Dr. Liz McPhee, who was working in Rwanda with mountain gorillas as a vet, was now setting up a new NGO. She was their country director here, mm-hmm. International Gorilla Conservation Program. Okay. So she, both of them convinced her. That it's okay. And I went. Okay. And I started. And that was when I was a vet student in the 90s. Did you feel isolated? When I was there. It's far out there. You're in the I forest. I thought like I was the reaching. Are there in the forest. I thought I was reaching the ends of the earth. <laughs> And it's really on top. Because yeah. when, when I drove today, you, you really are cl- you're going around a mountain, then eventually you see below. Yes, yeah. yes. And so my mom, um, I eventually took her to the gorillas. She went. She mm-hmm. went with my aunt, mm-hmm. uh, Mrs. Chiwana. And 
they she just said oh they're just gentle vegetarian mm. giants she could really she really also got captivated by them <laughs> which is really really nice yeah. and she's always really supported my work okay. and so i was so proud of her when she finally wrote, she her, wrote book, her book yeah. my life is butter weaving yeah. um based on her for her it was an autobiography mm. she was one of the first female members of parliament in the mm. new government in the 80s but even before that, mm. she was a pioneer of the women's movement in the 50s. Wow. The women's movement in Uganda began in the 50s. In the 50s and she was among those people who, yeah, before Definitely. independence. My mom was part of that. Fantastic. Yeah, because she would tell me how they would protest in the streets. They would be wearing no shoes. Uh -huh. Decide not to comb their hair. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> wow. They need to meet. I hope your mom has read this book. She passed away. Oh, Bambi. <laughs> And my mom probably yeah. knows her. Mm, yeah, probably, probably knows her. Okay, so, 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 tell so, me about so, mama. Movement. So mm. they started it in the, that time. They even wanted women to go to a funny part in the book is that mm. they wanted women to go to UK mm -hmm. to be part of the delegation to get independence from the British. Mm. And they said, no way. The prime no minister women. was like, mm -mm. Mm. no women on the delegation. That. <laughs> <laughs> We've come a long way. <laughs> And then when Amin came into power, he abolished all women's movements, unfortunately. Mm. And so then my poor mom had to, like, they had to cut back down. Mm. But sadly, Amin killed my dad, which is very, very oh, sad. Really? And she talks about it in the book. Yeah. And so we, we remembered him recently. Oh, this is in um, memory of Wilberforce Kalima. Yes, he was one of the first people to be killed. He was a minister, senior minister in Obote's government. Mm. And he was actually with him in Singapore when Amin took over. Okay. And then when my dad came back after a year, Amin killed him, sadly. But, I mean, it was, was a tragically. Very young widow. She was a very young widow with mm. six children. Whoa. Yeah. So she writes about it in the book. But mm. that, but after he killed my dad, when President Museveni came into power, mm. uh, my mom felt she should join politics to continue his dream, mm. and she rejuvenated the women's movement. So she mentored Honorable Miriam Matembe, who who spoke on her book launch, <laughs> the next the next generation of, of women. On in, Winnie Bianyima. Um, actually, Winnie Bianyima endorsed the book. Yes, like all those guys, Cis, Honorable Cecilia Ogwal, all those people, she oh, uh, mentored all of them. Nice. Honorable Rebecca Kadaga, yeah. they love her, and uh, they're always telling me about her when I meet them. And mm. she really mentored them and got them all going. Mm. And so that's when they got the lobbied for the affirmative seat in parliament for okay, women for, and so many amazing yeah. things so and now you're academic so i remember it was the time around the time where we got uh, yeah we, so girls have a lower points to yeah, enter yeah. yeah and i think so she's and really encouraging them to do stem science. stem science yes. uh -huh. oh. so my mom has been very much a part of all of that amazing. and and both of us have been in the forward day for what is the one for forum for women in democracy mm -hmm. but there's far away Okay. Forum for African Women Educationalists. Ah. Yeah, to mentor <laughs> girls to get into education and mm. science and all these fields. Mm. So she's in Fawe and I was also made a role model in Fawe. In Fawe. Okay. Yeah, because that time I was like the first fit for the Uganda Wildlife Authority. Mm. And, and they female. thought that I could really mentor people. Yes. Yeah. Okay. And I just happened to be female. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I, I'm a vet. I know, I know. No, because a lot of people say the first female wildlife vet. I was the first vet. The first week. I just happened to be female. Because <laughs> yes. a lot of people don't think a woman can do something before a man, yes. but it happened. But it did. I did. The first so, vet, period. Yeah, first vet. Yes. I just happened to be female. Okay. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> So, so now, and, and actually then I felt like I needed, trying to continue my dad's legacy. Mm. He did so much for the country as Minister of Works and Housing, oh, he Communication. Works. He okay. managed to shop for Uganda and bring Mandela Stadium mm. at the time and Chibimba Rice Scheme, Busitem Agricultural College, wow. Soroti Meat Packers, all those things. They used to go on delegations That's to China, India, all yeah. these countries. Mm. Yugoslavia, Russia, oh, USSR, yeah. and bring back things. Mm. And then when he was Minister of Communications and Industry, he encouraged a lot of local industries, including, there's a photo of him holding the first phone. And when, he, uh, he, yeah, the, 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 the ones that ring or the, the big mobile? The big ones, because <laughs> I mean the big ones, the landline. The ones that yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> and, and also this, constructing the road to Kabale. Okay. It's inside here. Oh, that, and I, that one, I made sure it was in the booklet, which yes. I hope to develop because I said, I spent so much time on that road to Kabale. <laughs> I have to put somewhere. this in. I have to put this here. Yeah. So we're really proud so of his legacy. So where does someone this? This, I can, this I, can, I can give it to you. Okay. Yeah. It's a booklet, but my mom's writing. Well, she's working with somebody. Yeah. Uh, Dr. Ivan Abulia to, to write a biography. biography. Oh, that would yeah. be great. Yeah, we're hoping that will come out mm. soon. 
So where yeah. does someone find this book? This book, um, you can get it from us directly, from Aristoc. It's mm. on in, in many of the bookstores. Okay. There's Aristoc and other places in is Kampala. Uganda available? Bookshop. Right. Yeah, this one isn't for sale, but it's available. Oh, we can give it to you. Oh, it's a yeah, yeah, one. yeah, yeah. It's so cool. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a precursor for the mm. book, which is going to be on sale. Okay. Yeah, the big book. <laughs> sometime this year? Yes. Well, I know how long it takes to write books. <laughs> Mine is coming out this year, oh, you actually. Have a book coming out? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's <laughs> called, um, it now has a title. Mm -hmm. It's called uh, Walking with Gorillas. Mm. Yes. Nice. And it's coming out yeah. in October. It's already been advertised on Amazon, Barnes mm. & Noble. Mm. The publisher is American, okay. Skyhorse Publishing and Arcade Imprint. Mm. And it's talking about my life with, Your life. with Your uh, my mm. conservation journey. Okay. It's more like a memoir. Part memoir, part charter. Mm. It's not quite an autobiography, but it's no, more like a yet, memoir. You can't. <laughs> I'm still, I'm, I still have many more years <laughs> to go. Yes. Your mom can write one. Yes, yes she's 93. <laughs> she just turned 93, but I still have many more years to go. <laughs> no. So it's just talking about my conservation journey, mm -hmm. how we set up. I started off by setting up the wildlife clubs mm -hmm. in my high school, Chibuli mm -hmm. Secondary School. Oh, so you've always, anyway, even from my When I was a You're teenager. Like, yeah. yeah, and that made me feel I want to be a vet who works with wildlife. Mm. And then after that, I managed to get do my vet degree in UK, mm -hmm. Royal Vet College, University of London. And then I worked with the gorillas in Bwindi, the chimps in Budongo Forest, the chimps oh, in the yeah. zoo, okay. and then later on became the first vet. And then we set up conservation through public health, mm. gorilla conservation coffee. So it talks about that whole, whole journey, journey of, you know, starting with an idea, mm -hmm. as you say, and this is a perfect place to talk yeah. about it. And, <laughs> so and you know, getting it going yeah. and engaging children in wildlife conservation, becoming the first wildlife vet mm. and actually when I became the first wildlife vet mm. people used to say we don't need vets in conservation these are wild animals why are you they, treating they, them they can sort themselves out yeah <laughs> if you treat the 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 mm. warthog is the next meal for the lion yeah. and in a way they had a point mm. but then with gorillas they're so endangered you don't know yeah, if they're picking so up something cute. from people mm. so you have to treat them yeah you see what I mean with them you can't risk because they're so few exactly yeah. so so that was kind of a new idea mm. within that side okay. and then CTPH is completely people thought we were mad mm. why are you combining conservation and public health yeah like and th th those are two different they, fields and they're always in conflict exactly they're always now apart from the way you are doing it mm. where you're engaging the community to benefit from the thing the wildlife to help you conserve yes some people just separate the community from the wildlife exactly yes. they do completely and they think they shouldn't be together mm. and yet they should and people are like, are you an animal person, a human person? It was so hard to raise money from <laughs> Do donors. I have to choose? They're like, what's up? You have up? to choose. Yeah, you go to animal donors, but that's human health. Mm. And then you go to human donors, but you're an animal person. It's, we don't want to deal with animals. <laughs> and so. You're it, in the middle. <laughs> and until we told them that if you can't help people, you won't be able to help yeah, animals. If you can't help animals, you, you won't be able, able to help people. <laughs> But now, um, with the COVID-19 pandemic, people mm. have understood that it's all interlinked because yeah. likely, we don't know where COVID came from, but it could have come from, li yeah, most likely came from an animal source, mm. uh, bats, and we don't know, maybe through an intermediate host, mm. it's pointing towards that direction, okay. but still needs to be proven. Mm -hmm. But the previous coronaviruses came from bats through an intermediate host to oh, people, yes, SARS. you know, yeah. SARS and yeah. MERS, yeah. and now it's jumped back to wildlife. We are cons we've been back. so concerned about COVID spreading to gorillas, mm. Um, it has not spread to wild gorillas, mountain mm. gorillas, but it spread to gorillas in zoos. In the zoos, okay. Yeah. Actually, when mm. I did that gorilla tracking, they, they insisted that we wear the masks. Yes. Like, they didn't insist we wear the masks when we were with ourselves. Yeah. But we, as soon as we got out of the cars, they're like, wear the mask, we have to protect the gorillas. And they were so strict on it. You know, you're walking, you're breathing, <laughs> and you have to take, you know, you keep yeah. the mask on, you had yeah. to keep it on. So I'm you so haven't glad. had any outbreaks? Huh? No, and that rule about putting on the mask, mm. our NGO advocated for it. Oh, really? Yeah, just in time, yes. March 2020, yes. we advocated for it with yes, the Wildlife the Authority, beginning. with other conservation NGOs. Mm. We, we, base, we, set, we held a ranger training mm -hmm. in just in, as the first case had arrived in Uganda. Okay. And now the rangers all have to wear masks mm. and we're continuing to train them. Yeah. And everyone who visits them, whether you're a vet, a yeah. researcher, yeah. a tourist, yeah. Every single person has to put on a well, mask. Well, I can tell you, they really do it. I'm so glad to hear that <laughs> they, they really did it. That's a great feedback <laughs> from you. Some point, like, like, um, I can't really, like, well, take a break, but keep the mask on. Uh -huh. And then walk again. They refused. I'm so <laughs> happy that the Rangers did that. I, I'm proud of them. I'm going to tell them we've got some great feedback <laughs> yeah. from Damali Sally. Your fa you know, she, by the time she says it, 
yes. everyone in the world will be clapping for you. Because <laughs> actually a lot of tourists were like, ah, we closed gorilla tourism. The gorilla shouldn't get COVID. Yes. Then until we said to them, it was closed for six months. Mm. Um, one thing I can say is the president of Uganda, what I was very happy about is after four months, they mm. started tourism in other parks because poaching had really gone up. Oh, yeah. So much because tourists were not but coming that anymore. that explains that mm. this uh, conservation with the community mm -hmm. really does work. Yes. Because you see now when they weren't benefiting, that's when poaching went up. Yes. When there were no more tourists, there was no more now income. Exactly. Yeah. The, the pandemic showed that tourists were contributing to conservation, to mm -hmm. the community. Mm. It really showed it. It was a natural experiment mm. which worked. Which was yeah. Because a lot of, which showed a yeah. point. Because a lot of people were saying, ah, and the communities are not benefiting yeah. enough. Yeah. But when tourism disappeared overnight, they really want. not only Uganda, hmm. all over the world, over the poaching world. doubled, really? more than doubled. It wasn't just yeah. in Uganda. Yeah, because that's when people knew, oh, tourism is it helping communities. And yeah. when it returns again, let's make sure it really helps them. Mm. Because it's the best way to support conservation. Okay. And so, and then, but the president of Uganda kind of said, no, let's wait for, in, it, it opened in June, but mm. he said, let's wait for a few couple more months mm. before we open it up for, for the, the, the primates because mm. we don't want to make our cousins sick, mm. the gorillas well, and we chimpanzees. Share so much of the DNA. Mm -hmm. mm. And so we really lobbied for that. And by the time it opened, mm. now all these rules were in place mm. and the rangers could manage the gorillas. Okay. People have to wear masks, they could manage the tourists. Mm. You know, the distance should be farther than what it was, yeah. 10 meters and de hand boot disinfection. Mm. sanitation, all of that, yeah. sanitizing your hands. Mm. So that has oh, yeah, prevented they, they also feedback. They COVID. sanitized us before we entered the, uh -huh. the, 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 the ranger themselves literally were like, shh, shh, shh. Brilliant. Using their own. Do you remember the yeah. name of your ranger? No. Yeah. But you will see them when you In the video. video I'm going to them. give him a, an yes. award. He did very well. <laughs> they like to hear that feedback. We've just yeah. been giving them a refresher training two weeks ago, okay. telling them, you know, you guys, mm. tourists, give us feedback. Mm. You really, yeah, yeah. you really have to keep enforcing these rules. Mm. There's Delta, Omicron, and even after COVID pandemic ends, yeah. the gorillas we would need to be protected from other respiratory diseases. By the way, mm -hmm. now, okay, now we know humans, these pandemics are happening. Yes. It's just better to keep them protected anyway. Yes, in Rwanda they have found that because people have been wearing masks during COVID, mm. they've had fewer respiratory diseases in gorillas. Ah. Yeah, like the flus and stuff so that they pick up for people. So in a way we people. were infecting them mm -hmm. when we didn't know. When we didn't know. So it's good now that we know. Yes, it's good mm -hmm. that we know. And yeah, then we um, have five minutes left. Okay. Oh, three minutes left. <laughs> I told you how um, the gorillas taught me to be a good mother. Yes. yes. And my boys have been coming. What I learned from them is um, they never let their children go away far from them. They are always with their children. Mm -hmm. I think you saw that yes, when you visited. Yes, I know the baby just was everywhere. Uh -huh. <laughs> and so when we went, when we had our children, mm. actually I spaced them. Mm. We spaced them. Me and my husband spaced them in the same spacing as gorillas and chimps. Are you serious? Four forward? and a half years. <laughs> this is ridiculous. <laughs> They taught me about family planning and about spacing. The gorillas, the because, <laughs> because by the time the new one comes, the other one is independent, mm. building his own nest, and, and it helps to babysit the oh, younger one. Oh, they can one. babysit, yes. Mm -hmm. And they don't feel neglected because they're uh -huh. old enough. Exactly. Okay. And they teach the other one many things. Wow. It's the perfect spacing, by the way. Four and a half. Yeah. So this whole two-year thing that two years do? Two years is too little. The other one has not quite grown up yet when you bring the new one home. That's why and they, they always suffer. feel like they, they, they still need the attention, but then you can't give them the exactly. attention. Things are acting out. Exactly. Ah, okay. So so with Indigo, what we did is, um, because he's been there so, so much, mm. when he was 13, he got a chance to volunteer at the Uganda Wildlife Education Center. Mm -hmm. He loves soccer, but mm. he had a soccer injury. Mm -hmm. So now I said, why don't you go to the zoo? So he went there. I was, I was on the board of the zoo. Yes. And so they were very um, excited to host Indigo. They've known him since he was little. <laughs> and so he did his volunteer experience yes. and he wrote in the Toto magazine for mm. New Vision. Yeah. Um, and his former teacher, Kathy Creator, mm. said, why don't you make it into a book? Mm. Um, his experience. Yes. His okay. former teacher at International School of Uganda. So, and Kathy has written many children's books. Mm. So she got him to, she mentored him mm. to write. And I told him when COVID came, I said, if you don't write you during COVID, right. you don't have a chance because <laughs> we're doing virtual schooling from home. Yes. He's in Taiba. So he wrote this. He did. Working from home. Okay, writing from home. Working from home. <laughs> and in it, you have like, you know, he has Sunday up to Monday. Yes. It's every day he, he worked with He's different species. Yeah. Yes. And over here, there's... On Monday, he worked with the large cats, and these yeah. are cheetahs, mm. which we rescued from Pianope Wildlife Reserve okay. in Karamoja. Mm. Um, when he was little, him and his little brother, mm. we took them, and now they're 
They're this big. grown. Oh, yes. wow. They're big and you can see them in the zoo. Yeah. They still have their same names. I like the way it's written like in a real book way. Uh -huh. <laughs> These are like real book lines. And he's put... <laughs> He's put some uh, fun facts, lots of fun facts about wildlife. Okay. And uh, he doesn't like that photo. Young person. Why? Oh, because he's scared. <laughs> the crested crane bit him. With the cr it, it actually bit him? It did. Is when it he wild? wanted food. He wanted food. Oh, look uh, at this. Uh, and over here, one of my favorite ones is this one. Mm. This is indigo. I, I looked at it, I thought, is this indigo or tender, his younger brother? <laughs> but it's him. Because okay. this baby elephant called Hamukungu mm. was rescued in 2012 by our volunteers in Queen Elizabeth National Park, uh, Community Conservation there? Animal Health Workers. Mm. He was drowning and they rescued him and the oh. chief warden, Nelson Guma, was like, your volunteers were so brave. Mm. Um, they rescued this baby elephant because they couldn't find the mother. He's the now at the zoo. The volunteers are the ones who saved the baby. Yeah. Yes. Uh -huh. The community members. Mm. And he's now at the zoo, very big elephant. Mm. But that time we were Indigo was looking after him, and Hamkungu knows Indigo well. Even Still, when you go here now, he recognizes him. Uh huh. The person who designed this book always tells you how Hamukungu still knows Indigo very well. Oh my God! Yeah, this is a beautiful book. So where does so, someone find the book? It's also this in Aristotle. It's also in Aristotle. Yeah, it's, it's in Aristotle, really cool and yeah. we can also sell it to you directly. But it's in Aristotle and a number of other bookstores in okay. Uganda. Thank yeah. you. We've run out of time now. What is, <laughs> is there anything you want to share with the audience? quickly yeah i mean maybe i'd like to tell the audience that it's you can always make a difference in conservation you can never be too young to do it and never be too old to do it um and please spread the word follow us on social media visit our website um and spread the word you know this is our natural heritage and it's up to us to protect it we it's good that we have external support people are interested in the amazing wildlife we have but they can't always come. The COVID pandemic has shown us that. We should be interested in our wildlife. We should visit our national parks. We should protect our wildlife because it's our national heritage and we owe it to the next generation. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, there you had it. Please do follow Conservation Through Public Health. They're on all the social media platforms. Buy the book. Definitely this book. I want to read this. Uh, <laughs> it's a very important book, I feel. Uh, Women Empowerment and Feminism are all in one. So, and also uh, the coffee, Definitely have some coffee and do visit Windy. It's and an come to our experience. cafe in, in you have Entebbe. A cafe? We have a Gorilla Conservation Cafe in, in Entebbe. Entebbe. Oh, yes. yeah, that's nearby. And <laughs> you can drink the coffee from there. <laughs> that, that coffee. <laughs> Thank you.